What Up Is Cool is proudly brought to you by Respo Clothing. Feel like a champion by wearing the merch from all the stars, including Luke Resner, B Squared, Savannah Rowe, John Stop Action, Nova Nichols, The Cooters, and my personal favourite, Conflict Axiom. So feel like a champion by checking out Respo Clothing. They can be found on Facebook and on Instagram. Prepare for combat. <coughs> I mean, MXW presents Mildy Combat, happening on March 2nd at the Sets Mildura. Ticket link is in the description. Make sure to check it out. Daniel Paul Crow. On this episode, I have MXW champion Scotty Roach and also Ryan Casca. They'll be facing off at Mildy Combat on March 2nd. Now, if you've been looking at the story very closely, both gentlemen have a lot of hostility, a lot of heat between each other. And on this episode, I hope to find out what exactly is all this tension and where all this heat is coming from. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me on this episode of Heat. Firstly, I would like to introduce uh, the MXW champion, Scotty Roach. How are you doing, my brother? Oh, I'm doing pretty well right now, actually. Sitting here with this bad boy, enjoying the cooling in the house, and uh, kind of a hot day without a beer. So I'm absolutely set today. How you been, man? Yeah, I've been pretty good, my friend. Um, and secondly, uh, a very close friend in Ryan Casca. How you doing? Living the dream as always. I've got my glass of nothing because I I don't drink water, but it's it's a it's the thought that counts, really, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it is very very hot, so we'll try we'll try to uh you know keep it as very limited because I am wearing a suit and it's thirty four degrees as of right now. But first, I wanted to discuss uh, it's a bit of an elephant in the room at the moment, and I want to take us back to uh, MXW's all for one, where Scotty, you won the championship for Charlie Rose, and in yep. controversial in controversial fashion, using your connections with Papa V. Mm-hmm. Now. What is your relationship with Papa V exactly? Well, plainly just going to say it, Papa V is my boss, right? He he runs the place. So, I mean, I've been dealing with the whole mental side of, you know, working with him. But when he came to me and he said that he needed a champion to represent the future of MXW, then obviously he saw something in me. So what, what am I going to do at that point? You know, do I just drop the idea and say, look, no, I want to be the honest guy. I want to go out there and give it my all, not go that far. Like The way I see it, the controversial fashion, I've had a lot of people say to me often that, you know, you're cheating to win. I don't see it as cheating. If, if, if you want to be champion, you're going to be willing to do whatever it takes to hold that title. That's what a real champion does. So if I'm going to have Papa V, I'm going to have management on my side. I'm going to have uh, Xavier Black there to have my back. Yeah, of course I'm going to have their support there. Why would I turn that down? It would just be absolutely stupid. I'll be putting myself at a disadvantage and I'll be putting the company and its future at a disadvantage by not being there, by not doing that. Simple as that. But isn't it a cowardly way to do it as well when you when you do something like that? I mean, look, I some, mean, of the be- some of the best champions out there got there on their own merits. They didn't need anybody out there. I know okay. that, that you'd have to have support out there, but... In this sort of fashion, it's very cowardly. Okay. Um, I'll bring an example to you. Um, what's Edge? He's an 11-time world champion. Yes. Correct? Mm-hmm. How many of those titles do you think he won fairly? Off the top of my head, I think it was like two or three. Yep. So is he then a two or three-time world champion, or is he an 11-time champion? Well, me personally, I don't I don't go by how many times you, you're your world champion. I go by how long you were the world champion, because you could be... Correct. 10, 15, 100 mm-hmm. ch- times champion. But how long did you actually keep it? I mean, yep. like in other in other sports like the UFC, you know, yes, you could be you could be champion as many times as you want, but they lose it after the next fight. Yeah. Yep. So what does so what does that mean exactly to you? Well, to me, I'm going to take every advantage I have in my arsenal. You know, holding the title makes me the main stage of the actual show. So I'm going to do whatever it takes to hold that title to represent it. I don't. I couldn't care less what a fan thinks or what talent in the back think of me because at the end of the day, I'm still working the main event. I'm still holding the title 
I'm still representing the company. I'm still the face of the company as the heavyweight champion. I'm still bringing in that heavyweight champion dollars too with it. So, I mean, I can go out there and fight fair. And absolutely, I can do that. And I've done that in the past. I've been successful doing it in the past. But also, why would I... To me, to me, I'll be... To me, I'll be holding back if I did that, you know? I'd rather go out there and do anything, anything possible to retain my title, to retain my prize. Because to me, that's what a real champion would do. A real champion doesn't stop. A real champion doesn't play by any rules. A real champion does whatever it takes to hold that title. Much like, much like every person that you look at in history or Hall of Famers or local wrestling legends have done before me. Like it's, it's, it's not just straight. It's just, it's how much you want it. And I truly believe in Geelong, I wanted it more than Charlie. Uh, in Ballarat, man, I don't want to get to go back to Ballarat again to be, I just want to put that out there. Um, but in Ballarat, Mike Chaos, he was, he was teetering to going to my level, stooping to my level, but he couldn't do it as well as I could. And at the end of, end of the day, I proved I wanted it more than him. Now, looking towards Mildura and Ryan, all, all due respect, you know, I have so much respect for you, your family, our upbringing. Um, but I don't think you're exactly championship material purely based on that. I don't think you're willing to go those lengths. I mean, I, I, I love you, man. I, I honestly love you. And I, look, any other time, any other match, bro, like we'll put on a barn burner, but... I just don't think you're willing to do what it takes to hold the title. Um, and that's right, no okay. shame, man. Honestly, yeah, that's okay. no shame. That's, look, man, I, I get, I understand this whole thing that you're trying to do. I get that, right? Yeah. I'm not taking any of this to heart because, like you said, we're family. You know, this is this is something that we have wanted for years, a decade plus even. And you have brought up really valid points, you know. Champions do what they have to do to hold on to their championship. That's That's fine. I get that. Right. But you and I both know the difference between a champion like that and a champion that you wanted to be. Someone that you looked up to when you were younger. You know the difference. You don't have to. I don't understand why you're trying to convince yourself that the way that you're doing things now is the right way to do it. And look, I don't I'm not trying to be disrespectful because this is a dream match for me. And I don't know if it is anymore for you, but it still is for me. This match, what it represents to to us growing up, to what we have been through, to the things that I have been through, what you've been through, and that we experience together. This, I, I just don't, I don't think you realize how big this is, because you're still in the mindset of you that you you support the company, you're all about the company, you've got all this support behind you, but. What happened to the guy that wanted to just go out there by themselves, you know? Who wanted to go out there and, and wrestle because they wanted to wrestle. Not because they just cared about a championship. Championships are cool. Championships are, what, are wonderful. But you weren't always Scotty Roach. You weren't always this guy who's just trying to get a cheap win or, or to find a shortcut to a victory. You you weren't always like this. And I, I know that my tone is coming off disrespectful. And that's not my intention, okay? I don't want you to think that I'm coming at you aggressively or that I'm trying to belittle anything that you've accomplished because I, I'm not. I'm so proud of where you have come from to where you are now. Not only were you the original MXW Tag Team Champion with Xavier Black, but now you're the second ever MXW Heavyweight Champion. You beat Charlie Rose. No one can take that away from you. But the way no. you did it was... That, that's, that's the problem. The way you did it is the problem. And I'm hoping that, that this match that we're about to have, March 2nd, I'm hoping that this can bring you back to the guy you used to be. In fact, actually, a little story for everyone at home. Scotty Roach, right? Our champion, MXW heavyweight champion, he wasn't always Scotty Roach. And I know this is a little bit of a sore subject for you, and I don't, no. I don't do this to upset you. Don't, I know. I Just hear me out. The first time that I ever heard that you had finally followed your dreams, that you wanted to become a professional wrestler, I was sent a link 
you recorded your very first professional wrestling match because no one cared about filming your match, but you went out of your way. You set up a camera and you recorded your very, very first match. You didn't send it to anyone else. You didn't even send it to my brother, your best friend growing up. You sent it to me because you knew how much wrestling meant to not me, but to you as well. You sent that to me and you wrestled as Aiden S. Because that's the guy that, when you were growing up, that's who you wanted to be. You always wanted to be Aiden Ayers. And now look at you. Now, now you're Scotty Rose. You're trying to be something you're not. You're trying to you're trying to fit a mold that you. I know you don't feel comfortable sitting in. And I remember when you finally gave it up. You you said, "I don't want to be associated with that anymore. I don't want to be Aiden Ayers. I want to be something different." It was like you were giving up on your dream. It was like you didn't care about what you wanted as a kid. You try to throw it away. You threw away your original gear. And you thought I you thought that no one cared about Aiden Ayers. You know what? Man, I that should be in the trash where it belongs. I'm gonna be honest no, with you. No, it shouldn't. No, 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 it shouldn't be. No, it shouldn't be. Because that is history. That is a part of who you are. And I know deep down, I know deep down, that's who you still are. So don't try and tell me that like this match is, oh, it's above and sh- it's shoulders above of what you're ready for that, oh, I'm not champion material. I am ready for this match. But I don't want to wrestle Scotty Roach. I want to wrestle. I want to wrestle Aiden Ayers. I want this guy. I want that intensity. I, w- I don't want the guy who's going to take shortcuts, who's going to try and just end the match as quickly as they can. You may not see me as a threat anymore. That's That's fine. You can underestimate me. Think about it. Think about all those moments when you were growing up. You'd come over to our house. You'd be greeted at the door by my mother. You'd open that door. Open arms. What can we get you? Are you hungry? Do you want something to drink? You'd come over. I remember you brought you brought a decade of a decade of decadence, the Edge DVD, and we sat down and watched it. Do you remember that? I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. You are family. That look in your eyes, that Aiden Ayers look in your eyes, that is what that gear represents. That's who I want to wrestle. So try and try and belittle me all you want. I know that that's that's a champion thing that they want you to try and to to get across, right? Is that is that what Papa V's been trying to tell you? Has he has he been getting in your head trying to tell you? What I discussed with Papa V, man, stays between closed doors, bro. That's just honesty. That's just honesty. Yeah. Yeah. But you, so you're you, hiding that away from actual family. Is that is that it, what we're doing yeah, here? Here's the thing, man. This is this is what you need to understand. Is that that uh, when was that? 2000. I'm looking at 2010. No, 2011 was when I left. 2009 to 10. 2008. Man, that's a long time. That's a long time ago. That kid there. That kid there growing up. You grew up with. He had some things happen in life, man. When, it, when, when I started in pro wrestling, I, I, I was like you, man. And that's, that's why I have a soft spot for you. I, I honestly do. I always, I always see you as sort of like my little snot-nosed little brother in a way, purely for that reason. Because I, I, I do see Scott, a that, 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 that's a bit that's a bit harsh to call him that. And, no, and, no, and, no, and, no, and no. to be honest, and no, be honest, and be honest, be a bit childish as well. Let him go. Clearly, he's got something he wants to get off his chest. Go, go for it. Go. But I always have that soft spot for you. I always had that soft spot for you because... The fact that I see you doing what you do in the ring right now and how you hold yourself, the fact the fact you give out merchandise to these fans for free, right? You chuck it out there like, like man, you're not making money off that. And I, I get it. It's the passion there. It's, it's you're living your childhood dream. You're living our childhood dream. And that's great. That's awesome. I mean, you know, great for you. But I tried to do the same thing when I started out. And you know where it got me? It got me at the back. I wasn't working a card. I could barely scrape through a show. I was basically begging and busting my ass every single night to get onto a show, to get onto a card, to prove to promoters, to prove to talent, to prove to everyone that I was worth booking. But every time I tried to be that guy, I got knocked down. I got knocked down a peg. I dropped down. Hell, I took a year break away from wrestling just to train because I thought when I come back, I don't want to be Aiden Ayers because Aiden Ayers essentially was a failure. He was a failure. He was an embarrassment. I need to be something different. I needed to work and I needed to be someone different. I need to look deep inside and find that little 
that that monster within really to release. And that's who I found. And that's who I became. And that's what's made me stay on top any company I've stepped in, whether it's MXW, whether it's Mayhem Pro, whether it's DMDU, whether it's going to APW, whether it's Lucha Fantastic for a bit of fun. But no matter where I've stepped in, this has opened doors for me like you wouldn't believe. And you're calling it the easy way out. You're saying that I sold out based on that. That's It's an interesting concept, but honestly, I think you just, I'm not mad about it. I'm not mad at you about it, honestly. I just think you're a little naive to the business right now. And it, it, look, 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 maybe in time you will learn that, but I'm thinking maybe even coming up to Mildura, I can teach you a little bit about that in the ring. Maybe you can learn something from me. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, is, that, is that right? Is that right? Okay. Yep. I don't know if you realized, and I, I don't think you did, throughout that entire little speech you just gave me, I looked in your eyes and all I could see was the doubt. I could see the doubt. I could see that you don't believe a single thing that you just said. Sure, I understand that things are going to get difficult. When we're first just starting out, I get that. I, I'm probably at that point now where things are things are getting stressful because I haven't experienced professional wrestling like this. The level I'm, I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to your level, Scotty. I'm trying to get there. So now I'm approaching that point where you felt like you couldn't go on. But I think it says a bit more about me that I'm not willing to give up. So what I want out of this match, what I want from you, is this championship is important. This match in the main event is important. But my moral victory is going to be, I'm going to bring Aiden Ayers back out of you. I'm going to wake that part of you back up. And I'll be able to tell. So you can hit me with everything you've got. You can hit me as hard as you want. I I desperately want you to because I want you to hit me with everything that you think Scotty has and then when it doesn't keep me down you have to go into the Aiden Ayers bag and you have to dip in again and again and again until you realize I didn't need to change I had that confidence all along I had what I needed right there it's not going to be overnight nothing ever is but I know who you are better than anyone else, better than Xavier Black, better than Papa V, better than anyone else is in your ear right now. I know you better than them. I want my brother back. That's what I want. And if I have to take the MXW Heavyweight Championship away from you in order to wake you back up, then I'll do that. That's my promise to you. Hey Dan, can you chip in here for a second, man? Do you, do you? I'm a, I'm gonna play interviewer for a moment, podcast e for a moment. Okay, Dan, if you were a betting man, right, you're putting your house on the line right here, right now. You're everything on the line. Who are you putting your money on? The uh, righteous Ryan Casca, you know, the the guy who's after the moral victory, or are you gonna put your money on the filth Scotty Roach? who actually respects his position in this business, who respects the title enough to do whatever it takes to remain champion. I mean, who, who are you putting your money on, man? Look, as much as this kills me to say this, and I know, Ryan, do not take this personally, right? but I weigh up the numbers on this one with having the likes of Papa V, having Savior Black, the company on Scotty's side, it is Scotty, but, and let me stress this, but strip everything away from Scotty. I guarantee this, and I will, and I swear on my parents' graves, Ryan Casca can pin you one, two, three. And live that dream of being MXW champion. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, hey. I mean, you got to be in it to win it. Is that right, Ryan? Got to be in it to win it, man. That's one person's opinion. 
and, and your opinion's valid, but I mean, if we look at track history, Ryan, if we look at experience, I mean, uh, to quote, to quote someone, a living legend, the numbers don't lie, do they? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me just take you both back a little bit. Now, back at goodness gracious, at MSW's goodness gracious, there was a triple threat between Ryan Casca, EVO, and Valido. Having watching that match, uh, Scotty, the passion and the performance that Ryan gave there, do you reckon that version of Ryan Casca has your number? Because many people have said that that was match of the night. And many people have said that not only was Ryan living the dream, he was the best thing in the world of professional wrestling. And you know what, those, I, I'm, right? I hate to boost your ego here, but those people are 100% correct. And you know what? I was actually looking back backstage watching that match. And it, the worst part was there was a, there was, a small part of me that really wanted you to win it. But at the same time, there was another part of me that really didn't want you to win it, man. I really, I was really banking against you, but it was conflicting. You, you, you put on the performance of the night. I'm not going to, I'm not going to take that away from you. And I mean, ever since you've, I mean, ever since MXW's really, really come to its own, you've been putting on consistently top notch performances I mean, you've earned your spot at what well, you've done, adrenaline, haven't you? As well, you've 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 been making you've been making the rounds around here, man, and people are taking notice. I've been taking notice. I've been talking to people backstage, taking notice. And look, coming up to Mildura, does that mean I'm going to take you for granted? No, no. I mean, if we if we were to talk two years ago, yeah, look, I, honestly, I would probably take you a little for granted, but right now I'm not taking you for granted. You, you're in my crosshairs, man. There is a chance you can beat me. There, there is. There's always a chance you can beat me. I just don't think you're gonna you're gonna win with the moral high ground. I don't think you can beat me that way. I think I think personally, this if if I'm gonna be a betting man for a second, I think Ryan Casca might even uh, delve into delve into his dark side a little bit. I reckon when the going gets tough and the pressure starts rising, I think Ryan's going to show some moxie out there. I reckon he's going to come out there and he's going to be a little underhanded and cheeky. And to be honest, I, I'm not going to be mad about that. I, I'm excited to see that. I want to know what that entails. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. You never had the pressure of a title fight like this, have you? No. No, you know, you're right. So you don't I know how you're going to react. I haven't, I haven't been in a main event championship match before but i'm excited yep i want this challenge i want this challenge of course i'm nervous i'd be stupid to say if i wasn't nervous and i think you'd be stupid to say you weren't nervous either this this is this is my biggest match this is i have a lot to prove i have a lot to prove to the people that i have rooting for me the people that believe in me more so than maybe there's times that i don't believe in myself as much as they believe in me but you know what this is that moment where i get to show them that all the belief they put in me has been warranted. And I have to prove not just to them that I can do this, but I've got to prove it to you that I have to prove to you that I haven't been wasting my time doing all of this to get to this moment where I get in the ring with you. Now, the fact that it's a championship match has made this quite murky for me. As we touched on before, it's murky. Because my ideal situation for all of this would have been just an exhibition match to show both of us where we're at, the levels that we've reached, the levels that we still need to get to. That would have been my ideal match. But the fact is, this is for the heavyweight championship. This is the main event in Mildura, our hometown. I don't want you to try and distance yourself from that. That's our hometown. Well, that's Those are our people. You go. Go, Scotty. No, what are you saying? I just want to touch back on something you just said previously. You said the fact that this is a championship match and how you wish it could be an exhibition. It could just be a, you know, let's see who the better man is without this kind of pressure on. Interesting you say that. I'm thinking this is an idea. I'm just going to spitball something with you. Let me know how you feel about it. So let's say hypothetically we turn up to Mildura. 
you and I turn up to Mildura. Mm-hmm. We go back, we go to Papa V's office, and you announce, I want to wrestle with Scotty, but maybe championship a bit soon. I'm sure you can make a case with it. I'll back you up. And I'm sure Papa V would actually be glad to see that you've shown that much respect towards the MXW Heavyweight Championship, myself, and you've shown that much respect to the company that you're willing just to put on exhibition. Maybe, maybe you get rewarded with another title match. And then think about it. You with your own title. Me holding my title. The photos we can get for social media. The stories we can tell the last week we'd have. You got to think bigger picture here, man. Scotty, so can I just interrupt you for one second? Why are you trying to do- 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 do dodge Ryan right now? Why are you putting this out there? Are you scared of him? Hey, it's not scared. I'm not scared. Well, it sounds it's, 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 it sounds like it right now because you just you just said let's go to Papa V's office. Let's go, you know, say I'm not ready for the Charles up. Let me go for another one. If that's not if that's not fair, if that's not fair, then what is? Hang on, hang on. Give it look. Give him a little bit of credit. I know him. He's not scared. He's not scared at all. I think. I think if we just break that down, Scotty, that championship, you earned it. You did. You did tap out. I I do have to say you did tap out. That's not that's that's not up for debate. Are you are you worried that I might have someone to help me there? Are you worried that potentially that I might, as you said, I might maybe I'm going to dip into something that's deep inside of me, and maybe I'm not going to come into this match alone? Are you worried that potentially it's not going to be fair on your side of things? Because I know you're not scared about actually wrestling me. Because you're incredible. You are incredible. That's 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 well documented. But you don't know what I've got planned, do you? And that's a little concerning. Just a little bit, surely. I mean, that's interesting you bring that up, actually. That wasn't really in my forefront. You know, I wasn't really focused on that. But even the fact you're talking about it interests me. But what really why I brought up that idea with you is because, you know, I do love you. You're my brother, without a doubt. You're, you're, you're family to me. We talked about that. You touched on it before, you know, how often I was over at your house, how often we, we grew up together, the, the wrestling movies, the wrestling shows we watched, the games of Gears of War on the Xbox and SmackDown, SmackDown versus Raw 2010 or 11. I think it was a bit of both. It was a bit both. of both. A bit of both, bit of both. yeah, yeah. If we went in just to a regular match, an exhibition match, you would get that guy. You would get that happy go. Let's let's put on a good show. Let's give it our all. Let's have fun out there, man. Let's give let's give Mildura one hell of a show, being the hometown boys. But with the title of the line, there's a part of me that's afraid of what I'm actually going to have to do to you to retain it. I. I've come to realize there isn't really any depths that I'm willing to sink. That I, I can keep going lower and lower, man. I'm not afraid to bust out a chair and crack it over someone's skull to win a title. I'm not afraid of, of bending the rules, having people come in there to assist me with a, a whiskey spray here or a low blow there. And man, you spoke, you spoke about people coming to back you up. I'm, that interests me because I'm looking through. I mean, you, you do have you do have your tag partner. That's that's a good possibility. But then again, my tag partner might also be around too. So that kind of negates that. You're saying backup as in, has your family got front row tickets yet? Are they, they're going to be there, right? They're going to see the show. Yeah, you're damn they're right. Gonna they're going to see you. Having your greatest fall, the, the possibility, sorry, the possibility of you having your biggest fall in this company. Look, I'm going to be honest with this much pressure. I don't know if I can control myself to be focused on just you or if anyone else gets involved, I would hate to see what would happen to them. I'm just saying, man. What are you trying I'm to just say? Saying. Sorry, what, what are you saying. trying to say right now? I'm, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, man. All is fair in love and war. Well, I'm willing to do 
whatever it takes to hold this title. I just don't think you are. I know you aren't. And I'll do whatever it takes to retain, whatever that may be. I know the company's got my back. Who's got yours? You've just, you've, you've really thrown me there for a second. Because it kind of, now, don't don't quote me, but it kind of sounded like you were just threatening my family then. But, I'm not but threatening you, anyone. But you, but you wouldn't, wouldn't do that, would you? You wouldn't no. do that, Scotty, would you? God, no. God, no. No, 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 no. no. I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry you took, the, I'm sorry that's what you took from this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I wouldn't be thinking just about that. Insinuation, was, just, was it? Was well, that just an honestly, insinuation? Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. If I were you, I'll be just focused on the match. Just focus on me, man. That's all you got to do. Focus on the match. Then why right. bring up comments like there. that, Scotty? Right. Why bring okay. up comments like that? Well, I thought this. I thought you're supposed to be not biased about this, but it seems like you're better mates with our Ryan here. I, I'm, I'm not throwing out these comments. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying that he should really be focused on the match, and I'm just saying that unlike him, there is no depth I won't sink to. But that's the sort of that? thing that's that you that. cannot tolerate, and it will be yeah, not right. be tolerated. In the world of professional wrestling, when you okay. attack a man's family, even even though it might be words, it's very disgraceful, Scotty. I'm just I gotta admit, I am very ashamed of you right now. Wow, wow, jeez, man, Scotty, you, 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 Scotty, you and me go way back, okay? Yeah, yeah. And look, I've no need to be a, or, or, always been straight with me. I'm being straight with you right now, right? Making comments like that. You, you just better pray that Ryan, that dark side of Ryan, Casca, does not come out. Because I can tell tell you now, if you were to say that sort of stuff to me, right, although I'm not a wrestler, right, I will give you everything that I've got. And I think looking at Ryan's expressions, that dark side of Ryan Casca is going to come out. He won't be living the dream, but you will be living the nightmare. Hey, hey, okay. Let's let's take a step back. Let's take a step back. Ryan, you have something to say? Um, I'm just gonna throw it out there. I'm not insinuating anything, okay? We're getting heated right now. Okay, things are getting a bit hot right now. Let's 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 admit that. Let's admit that. I'm gonna take a deep breath because I don't want this to blow out in proportion. Okay. Now, now you can say what you need to say about that, and I understand you're feeling what you're feeling. I'm just saying there's a lot of pressure involved in these sort of matches. Sometimes, sometimes just happens. But I would never, Sorry. ever deliberately harm or insult your family in any way like that. You're in my crosshairs. You're, you're in my forefront right here. And I want you to remember that. This is Scotty Roach talking to Ryan Casca. This is Nate Ayers talking to Ryan Casca, man. It's... No, you've made that abundantly clear. You've made that abundantly clear because the guy that I grew up with wouldn't have said shit like that. The guy I grew up with would never have suggested, even hinted at the idea of doing something to, for example, my mother who will be there, my brother who will be there. And God forbid, if my actual older brother is there, the one that you grew up with, if you even have an inkling of that in your head of of making that mistake that little that little dark myth that you think that is inside me no 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 i wouldn't be worried about that i'd be worried about the righteousness that is in my heart because i swear to god if you even think about going near them i will take that championship i will shove it up your ass i will pull it out your throat I will stand over your body once I've beaten you to become the heavyweight champion because shit like that doesn't fly. You don't say shit like that. And clearly this, clearly Scotty Roach, at this point, clearly Scotty Roach has taken over from Aiden Ayers, all right? Clearly. And if you're trying to, if you're trying to push me away, that's fine. Like I, I've had people try and push me away in similar regards before. I get it. All right, you just want to hurt me. You just want to say things that are going to upset me. I get that. You are my brother. I will fight tooth and nail to bring out the true version of you. Don't cross 
that line. If you truly care, if you care about this match, if you care about me, if you care about your legacy as MXW Heavyweight Champion, you will not cross that line. Military Combat will be happening on March the 2nd. Ticket link is all in the description. Gentlemen, thank you for being part of What If It's Cool Heat. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Yeah, cool. Thanks for uh, that. Appreciate it. And that's the end of that episode. Well, as you can see, it did get very heated, and I do apologize that um, I stepped out of line a little bit there and showed a little bit of aggression. Uh, but when you make a comment like that that involves a man's family, that's the kind of response you're going to get out of me. But I still wish both men good luck at Mildy Combat. Make sure to get your tickets. Link is all in the description. And with that being said, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcast. And until next time, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.